All right, I was just sitting there, yeah, and something just occurred to me. Let me take out all of the confusion. So all of the people that don't actually matter. So that includes this guy that's had me arrested because he's a diversion and I've been too caught up in this bloke and proving what he's been doing to me in order to just show you the straight facts. <clears throat> so that is what I'm gonna do. Right, so taking away, right, so taking away all the confusion now, right, this is where we're at. This is, this is what I'm saying to Rupert Murdoch, okay? Right, first of all, we've got the Millie Dallas story, right? Now, this is what's apparently started all of this, yeah? Right, Millie Dalla. Now, phone hacking, right? That's, that's, that's what this is all about. Millie Dalla was, her messages were, were hacked and messages were deleted in order for more to come through and Glenn Mulcair was up in that and all the rest of it, right? So, straight away, let's go to uh, the man that's bylined on Millie Dalla's story, his name's Robert Kellaway, right? Now, Robert Kellaway, in the hacking inquiry, as tweeted by Peter Jukes, who live tweeted the whole hacking, tri uh, uh, whole hacking trial and also works in conjunction with Hacked Off, okay? Right, so Peter Duke said, Kellaway confirms he knew nothing of phone hacking or Millie Dale's voicemails being accessed. All right, there, there's that. Right, so now my job is to prove that they're all lying and put them all to sleep, right? Right, so that's what Kellaway has officially said. He confirms he knew nothing of phone hacking or Millie Dalla's voicemails being accessed, even though he's bylined on her story. And his answer to that was, uh, my name must have been put on her byline uh, to keep his byline, his byline can up, and it must have just been done as a professional favor. That's his official answer. Right, so the problems start now with when I get Robert Kellaway's police witness statement against me from uh, a, a story that went out in 2002 with the News of the World where they'd done a sting operation on me. They set me up basically, a bit like what they'd done to John Alford. And um, I've managed to reacquire uh, Robert Kellaway's police witness statement because it had been hidden from me, right? So I've got, police, I've, got, I've got his police witness statement sent to me, cut a long story short, from my old solicitors, right? There you go. And not from choice. I like to trick him into sending it. Right, now my story was this. I was, uh, I, I, was, uh, I was done over by the news of the world. It was uh, 26th of April 2002. Millie was done on the 10th of April 2002. Although Glenn Mulcair says that Neville Felbeck got the number from Surrey Police. It was them that gave her mobile number out. And he got it on the 21st of March, had a go himself and then gave it to Glenn. And that was a story on me. And then there's other follow-up stories here saying that from the same thing that I hired a hitman. Now Peter Jukes is telling me that the guy that they're saying I've hired a hitman actually works for Mazda Mahmood. Um, right. So Robert Kellaway has said he knows nothing of phone hacking or Millie Dalla, right? Right, this is where you get taken down, my friend. This is an email from Robert Kellaway to DS Werrett uh, at Latin Police Station, okay? Right, and I'm gonna read this out for you quickly. Dear Mr. Werrett, this is from Robert Kellaway, and this is on May the 8th, 2002. So the next month. Uh, Dear Mr. Werrett, as requested, here are the transcripts of the conversations I outlined to you yesterday. I've put them in chronological order, starting with Reese Morris's call to Zorba's mobile telephone, then Harvey's call to Zorba, and finally Harvey's discussion with Zorba in the car which is transcribed in two sections. Any commentary on the transcript, transcript appears in brackets and was intended for use by my office. And I've underlined that. Okay, so that's Robert Kellaway uh, admitting that he knows telephone conversations have been recorded and he's telling the police. And he's not only recording them himself along with Comrade Brown and others, um, he's transcribing them himself and, and sending those transcripts that he's done to the police, which is illegal, it's interception of communications. You would have to obtain a, a warrant from the Home Office in order to legally intercept communications. 
And the News of the World journalists would never be able to do that. It's for secret services and police and all that kind of game, right? So is Robert Kellaway admitting uh, that he's recorded all these conversations? Uh, now, the interesting part for me was transcripts of this conversation between Kamal Zorba and a friend of Brian Harvey's known to Zorba as Reese Morris, a drug dealer, who's not a drug dealer, he was my mate and he's now dead and there's something wrong now. Uh, Kamal called Brian Harvey's mobile telephone at 15.40 hours, 26th of the 4th, 2002. Reese responded by calling Zorba's mobile at approximately 15.45 hours. Transcripts of this call began at 20, 27 hours on the 2nd of May 2002. And then underneath there, it goes on to um, uh, the transcribing of uh, Zorba and Reese having a conversation there. And I've got pages and pages of that. Now, the interesting thing, Robert Kellaway, so we, it, it's proved that uh, that's a lie, okay? That's a lie. Robert Kellaway did know about phone hacking and uh, was recording himself. Uh, and this is all done the same month as Millie Dalla. And then when Robert Kellaway thinks he's fucking turned me over, he only leaves a message on my voicemail, which Scotland Yard conveniently left out when they gave me the Mulcair notes. Page 59 we're looking for now. Third of the 502, uh, message from Robert Kellaway on now. Yeah. And the reason that the old Bill didn't send me that, or the solicitor didn't want to send me Robert Kellaway's police st witness statement from the same month, the same year in my sting operation, was because they're protecting him because he's got a partner recording with him as well, uh, a covert audio taping investigations man, and his name's Comrade Gregory Brown. Uh, Comrade Brown only works with the fake shake. So the fake shake's involved in my story, cut long story short, even though his name's never come to the surface. This is Robert Kellaway's police witness statement from my case, same month as Millie Dalla, uh, from the guy that says he knew nothing of phone hacking or the interception of her voicemails. I have worked as a news reporter for the News of the World for three years and four months. At about 12.45pm on Friday the 26th of April 2002, I was in the canteen at work when I was contacted by Greg Miskill, the news editor. Remember, he, 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 can't, he said, oh, I, can't, I can't remember all of this. But then he can remember the far end of a fart of Millie Dallas story, which was the same month. And he's all entwined here, so don't tell me you can't remember. Anyway, he was phoned by Greg Miskill, the news editor and News International Direct employee, right? This is why he's made it corporate. He asked me to liaise with Stian Alexander, whose police witness statement I've got here as well, about a story. I returned to the office and spoke to Stian. He introduced me on the telephone to Kamal Zorba. Right, I just want to go to Robert Kellaway's last page of his statement. Because Murdoch, you're going to start paying attention to this, mate. Don't keep ignoring me like I'm not here when I've got you banged to rights. Police witness statements and everything. Let me just read this, OK? So... Robert Kellaway confirms he knew nothing of phone hacking or the, or the interception of my, uh, Millie Daly's mobile telephone conversations. Last page of Robert Kellaway's witness, police witness statement. He received phone calls on his mobile telephone from Reese Morris and Brian Harvey. They had apparently discovered what Kamal had done and made threats to him in the event the story was published in the News of the World. I have a micro cassette with recordings of most of those conversations. Either Kamal or I actually recorded them. I shall transcribe the calls. Kamal was paid in five instalments a total of £15,000. I subsequently took the camera and cash to Loughton Police Station on the 8th of May, three days after the story's been in the paper, uh, 2002, to DS Werrit. 8th of May, yeah? And then this email from Robert Kellaway to DS Werrit, yeah, is after that, clearly, where he says he's... Uh, he outlines all the conversations that they've been recording. Any commentary on the transcript appears in brackets was intended for use by my office. That's your office, Rupert Murdoch, yeah? 
and uh, not News Group Newspapers Limited, this is News International PLC, now known as News UK. It's intended for use by your office, the phone tapping and the transcripts and everything, so that's illegal. Uh, you transcribe on the 2nd of the 5th, 02, which is another interesting point, because uh, when I get the Mulcair notes from the police, oh, I've, got, I've got these pages here, right? This one here have a big ring next to my name. Look here. And then all these other little details what are in there are blanked out, but they leave Jesse Wallace's details open on there, so it doesn't make any sense, this redaction thing. Just hiding stuff from the victims, that's all. Uh, right, page 60, top left, for Neville, 2nd of the 5th, 02. But then the majority of my mobile number blanked out. Now my mate found that number, wicked, um, and then all of this number down here, this was the house number, I think. Uh, yeah, that was the house number. Uh, medical details have been gathered there, all sorts of stuff, yeah? And then here's me asking Scotland Yard for page 59 because they give me page 58, page 60, but no 59. And I know, apart from Glenn Mulcair doing my mobile the same day Robert Kellaway's transcribing all of his illegal recordings, uh, you know, some of them from uh, Comrade Brown as well, who works with a fake shake. So I've now just tied the fake shake to Glenn Mulcair through that date and association of all these people working together. Now, what's the likelihood of them all telling the truth? Nah. Especially when Robert, the, the page that they're missing is 59, right? And what's going to be on that page is a message from Robert Kellaway to me after he's done his sting operation on me, saying to me, Call to what appears to be Brian Harvey's answer phone, leaving a message. Says, I gather you're trying to get in touch with me, apparently. Brian, you're more than welcome to give me a buzz. He then leaves his mobile number on my uh, answer phone. And conveniently, 2nd of the 5th, 02, I've got Kellaway transcribing here on May the 3rd. So that's the 3rd of the 5th, 02. That would have been the Friday before the story coming out on the Sunday. Sunday came out on the 5th of May 2002. He's still going on the Friday, the 3rd of May, still recording and transcribing. Now, that, that's it, you're done, you're finished. I don't know what else to say. There it is, Rupert Murdoch. And I can prove that I asked Scotland Yard for page 59 that no one wanted to give me. And uh, here's the Mulcair notes that I got from Mulcair himself. Now, he still hasn't given me page 59, so you're still on it, in on it. And you're still protecting Robert Kellaway, because you know damn well page 59 should say, sec that's second of the 502, should say further the 502, because he's, you know, he's transcribing on that date, and he, as I just showed you. And he leaves me the message on that date. So further the 502 uh, was a Friday, and that's what's on page 59. And page 58 has got a date of 11th of the 12th 03. And the 11th of the 12th 03 was when I took my granddad into hospital and he never came out of there. And you lot are just monitoring and listening to all of it. Wankers. All right, one last thing. The story I've been saying, Andrew Ash, the Express interview, right? Uh, January the 12th, 2014, right? A couple of months after I get Robert Kellaway's police witness sent to me by mistake. I get dragged down there to do that. I don't know, he was going to kill two birds in one stone. But the problem is for this, James Fielding at the Express, you've got a lot of questions to answer, mate. You're next, right? You're fucking next, because you seem to be right up in the middle of this. Bill Maloney, John Wedger, putting all these fucking stuff. You put this fucking story out, and you said you was going to go away and check it. I take it you, took it, you, you checked it, because you put the fucking story up, right? So you're responsible for this as well. Now you know what was going on with this story and why I was taken down there to do that. Because, in the background, which I just took a chance and, and, and just checked one day. I just thought, let me just check, let me just have a look. And what I found was amazing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So Andrew Ash, The Express, January 2014. 
Who else is working at the Sunday Express at that exact time before and after? Robert Kellaway. What's the date on that one? 2016. Robert Kellaway, November 28th, 2013. So about the same time, really. The, ne the, ne the next month after I got Kellaway's statement, I I've got you there then anyway. And after. And then here's another one. My dog chewed this one up, so this one must be important. Robert Kellaway, The Express newspaper. May the 14th, 2014. This week, the judge claimed singer Brian Harvey didn't have a stain on his character. Our hate-filled tapes prove him wrong. And that article, the outline parts in that are in that. You never gave us the tapes for it. And even so, the fact you recorded, you should all be in prison right now. Why are you not? And why are the police not acting right and arresting me? When you've got Andy Coulson, Tom Crone, Neil Wallace. And who's Neil Wallace friends with? The bloke that's just had me arrested. If you don't get it now, you never will. But Rupert, I know you're watching and uh, all of this is to come, so do what you're doing with your police, nick me, send in who you like, because we are going to fucking end up in court and I'm going to destroy you, you cunt. <laughs>